Hello, I'm Simon Whistler, you're watching Top 10's Net, and in the video today, we're going to look at 10 insanely advanced pieces of Nazi wartime equipment. Here on the Top 10's channel, we have a strict no-swearing policy, which is why, if you want to know our actual opinion of the Nazis, you have to get together a bunch of NWA songs. For people unwilling to do that, I'll sum it up by saying that we don't like them very much. That being said, the Nazis did give the world some of its most hilariously badass and awesome inventions of war. Since they basically gave scientists free reign to do whatever they wanted in the name of invent new ways to kill people, we've been blessed with some of the following war machines. The Top 10 Insanely Advanced Pieces of Nazi Wartime Equipment Number 10. The Land Cruiser P-1500 Monster the Land Cruiser P-1500 is, without a doubt, one of the largest man-made vehicles ever proposed. With a proposed length of 150 feet, this mobile artillery barrage would have been able to reduce, well, anything to a smear on the map of history. It's the mobile part you should be amazed about, though, since this thing, if built, would have been fully capable of movement, despite the fact that it literally fired shells as big as tanks. That's right, the Nazis actually tried to build an artillery gun that fired tanks. Shockingly, it went nowhere, which is often the case when you design something based entirely on what an eight-year-old boy would find awesome. Number 9. The Junkers Jew 322 Mammut The Jew 322 Mammut, mammoth for all you non-German speakers, was a giant flying wing, that's the actual technical name, that was proposed by the Nazis. This 200-foot-wide monstrosity of engineering was commissioned to carry troops or transport in the event of an invasion of Britain. To clarify, the Mammut was a glider, as in it had no means of propulsion. It literally had to be dragged by another plane just to get into the air. Oh, and it was also made of wood, despite the company responsible for building it supposedly being pioneers in the field of metalwork. Only two were ever built, and the first and only test flight supposedly ended with the Mammut crash landing in a field. You have to give the Nazis a point for trying, though. Number 8. The Sun Gun the Sun Gun, in a nutshell, was an idea proposed by Nazi scientists to harness the very power of the sun itself to destroy anyone who dared give the Nazis the middle finger. In post-war interrogations, it was revealed that Nazi scientists were not only working on this idea, but fully believed such a device could be operational within 50 years. When asked to comment on what they thought, American officers simply said, fantastic. Though the lack of a giant gun in space right now would hint that they weren't that impressed, their eight-year-old sons probably thought the idea was awesome. Number 7. The Messerschmitt Me 323 Gigant The Me 323 Gigant giant, was the bigger, badder, actually capable of functioning brother of the Mammut. Boasting a 181-foot wingspan, the Gigant was literally one of the biggest things in the skies at the time and was notably difficult to shoot down. Presumably this was because the Allied pilots had thought God had taken his own personal jet out for a boogie in the clouds. The Gigant could easily seat 120 men, though this number could have been increased to over 200 if said men didn't mind sitting on each other's knees. Oh, and they did still get shot down, which proves that size doesn't matter if you don't know what you're doing with it. Number 6. The Arado in Comet and Schwalbe The planes here are a bomber and reconnaissance aircraft, a fighter, and a bomber-slash-fighter. They hold the distinction of being three of the first jet-powered aircraft to ever fly in combat, with the exception of the Comet, which is the only rocket-powered aircraft in history. Though the Comet sunk the fat one and only scored nine kills in its entire operational history, the fact remains that all three planes were literally untouchable in the sky, as they were simply too fast. The Arado in particular, when used as a bomber, was unstoppable, and the Schwalbe, when used as a fighter, was so fast that the Allies were forced to attack them on the runway. Number 5. The Zielgerat 1229 The Zielgerat 1229, also known as the Vampire Scope, was a revolutionary night vision attachment designed to be fitted to the Nazis' equally as revolutionary STG-44 assault rifle. This basically gave soldiers equipped with the system the ability to see in the dark. Please note, again, that the Nazis had all this stuff during a time when stabbing a guy with a knife fastened to your gun was still considered high-tech. The Vampire Scope basically turned the soldier into an unseen reaper of the battlefield, an invisible, faceless enemy, capable of killing people before they even knew he was there. And we now know where the idea for Predator came from. Number 4. The Fielsela Fee 103R From one of the most technologically advanced things to one of the most stupid, the Fielsela Fee 103R was, for all intents and purposes, a flying bomb. In fact, that was his nickname. Pilots were literally strapped onto a missile that they could steer and told to have Adam. 
In fact, even if said pilot was able to climb out of the plane, a word we use in the loosest possible sense, he'd invariably be sucked into the plane's engine, and that's not even taking into account the fact that he would have to somehow maneuver his enormous balls out of the way first. The Faisaler scored a grand total of zero kills on the Allies, though many Nazi pilots died during its test phase. That's right, the Fielsaler was so ineffective as a weapon of war, it actually had an infinite negative kill-to-death ratio. Number 3. Fletner Fee 282 Calibri The Calibri Hummingbird was somehow brought to you by the same geniuses who thought strapping their pilots to missiles was a good idea. It is essentially a precursor to all modern military helicopters, and it actually worked. Though other helicopters were invented during World War II, the Calibri was operational way before most of them even got off the ground. It was also far superior to virtually anything the Allies had in the skies at the time. It's noted that even during incredibly bad weather, pilots were able to fly the Calibri with no trouble. They were so effective that the Nazis actually ordered hundreds of the things. However, an Allied bombing run destroyed virtually all of them, which, when you think about it, is really the best wartime strategy of them all. No overly detailed mapping, no intricate spy games. Just blow everything up until there's nothing left to be blown up. Number 2. The Vortex Cannon Nazis building giant superweapons is pretty much a trope now. If it was insane and destined to fail, the Nazis probably tried to kill someone with it. This is summed up no better than with the Vortex Cannon, the Nazis' supposed attempts to shoot down planes with tornadoes. Yep, you heard that correctly. Though stories are confused about how far along with the project the Nazis were, the fact remains that they did indeed have the technology to potentially rip airplanes out of the damned sky using torpedoes and explosions. No photos exist of the machine as far as we know. It's entirely possible that they do exist, but gazing at them would cause your face to melt like the Nazis in Indiana Jones. Number 1. The Ruhrstahl X4 when compared to a gun that harnesses the power of Iron Maiden albums to explode planes, a missile may seem like an odd choice for the top spot of this video. But it's not the technology behind the X-4 that's impressive, it's what it represents. Basically, the X-4 was a tow missile. It was a controllable missile tuned to the vibrations of a bomber's engine. In the right hands, it could have literally changed the course of the war. Just imagine if they'd fitted this thing on one of those planes that they had that were too fast to catch. Though it was never used by the Nazis, the technology is the basis of what we use to take out enemy planes today. We should probably be thankful that the Nazis never did get this thing to work, otherwise you'd probably be watching this video in German. So I hope you found that video about Nazi war machines interesting. If you did like it, give us a like below. Also, if you liked this video, you'll probably like some of our other stuff. A big subscribe button below. We put out new videos just like this seven days a week. Also, if you like this video, you'll probably like some of our other videos about Nazis. You can see uh, over there on the right the top 10 things that changed forever because the Nazis liked them. And also the top 10 American companies that aided the Nazis. And there are some real shockers on that list. So thank you for watching.